Welcome to this painting tutorial. In this video we're going to look at how to paint a Thousand Suns Chaos Space Marine. In this video I used the new Citadel gold paints and I used the most vibrant colored blues for the armor. I'm pretty happy with the way this miniature turned out and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video you can like, comment and subscribe and stay after the video to learn how you can support my channel. I'm going to start by priming the model in black. You can use any primer that you like. I use Rust-Oleum. Uh, the black color is just personal preference. You can use any color that you like. I'm going to start by basing the whole model with Calidar Sky. If you could find a blue primer that matches this color, you can use that instead and that would save you one step. Uh, here I'm using Calidar Sky thinned down with a little bit of drying retarder just to help the color to go more smoothly onto the model and to extend the time that I have to paint with it. I used uh, two coats of this color just to give it a, a solid base and that's it. Once I'm happy with what I did, I'm going to use Drakenhof Nightshade to shade the whole model. You could instead shade the recesses with a fine detail brush, but I like a little bit more uh, painting like this because I feel like I have more control over how much of the wash I want to leave behind. Uh, any of the methods is uh, totally fine, you, you can do it however you want, but I'm going to shade the whole model and then clean up after, after that. Next comes the cleanup. I'm going to use Calendar Sky and I'm going to give another layer over the whole armor, just leaving the recesses on the previous color. I'm using a size 2 brush and I'm still using thin down paint with drying retarder. You can use water if you want. Drying retarder only helps the paint stay wet for longer than just water. Once that's done, I'm going to start edge highlighting the model. I'm going to start with Teclis Blue and I'm going to thin it down again with the drying retarder that helps the paint stay wet and work with it a little bit longer on the tip of a tiny brush as I'm using a fine detail brush and I'm just trying to hit on all of the edges. Uh, you can use the side of the brush as much as you can, uh, but there will be places where you will have to kind of freehand the model. You can brace your hands together and uh, that will give you a better control over the brush. And if you mess up at any point, you can clean up with Calendar Sky again. And if the, any colors go into the crevices, you can use Drakenhof Nightshade to tidy up the recess. Next, I'm going to use Rust Gray. This is going to be the final highlight, and I'm only going to use it on the very sharpest edges of the armor. You could also use Fenrisian Gray if you would like, uh, but I like this color a little bit better. Fenrisian Gray is uh, a lot more brighter. But this last step is going to give the model that final highlight that's going to really pop up from a distance and define the edges very well. Next I'm going to start base coating the gold with Retributor Armor. This is a new colored paint, it's a little bit more expensive than the normal colors, but it covers super well over even black primer, so uh, it only needs just basically one coat. Metallic paints contain alcohol, so you might want to... use uh, new paint constant constantly and use drying retarders or whatever you can so that the color doesn't uh, dry or become tacky on your palette. So if it feels like you're using thick paint or very tacky paint, you should uh, take some more paint out of the pot 
put it in your palate and turn it down and continue working because alcohol dries very fast as you may already know and uh, it's a little bit different working with metallics than with uh, normal colored paints. Here I'm coloring the bone with uh, sundry dust. This is going to turn out uh, kind of similar to the gold color, uh, but once we highlight it, they're going to separate and they're going to look better. Uh, don't try to rush this step because uh, bone color is very easy to give it a very thick coat of paint, so give it uh, thin layers and multiple. Here I'm using Lead Belcher and with this color I'm coloring in all of the silver areas. I'm working the same with the Lead Belcher, the same way that we did with Retributor Armor. I'm just uh, base coating all of these areas and trying to be very careful not to paint on the colors that I already painted. Next, I'm going to start washing the details with Seraphim Sepia to start with the gold and the bone. Be very careful not to let it pull, but try to cover the whole uh, area to give uh, good shading onto the recesses. If it gets a little bit into the blue, you can clean it up with a wet brush or just swipe it up with uh, maybe a Q-tip or a little piece of uh, tissue but uh, try not to let it pull and uh, get into all of the recesses of the gold you don't have to shade places where gold doesn't have any detail but uh, the rest of the gold that has uh, crevices onto the skulls and arrows you have to wash them so that the gold the sepia gets, gets into the crevices uh, and next I'm going to use Nuln Oil and I'm going to do the same for the metallic silver areas. Uh, for the sword I don't need it to cover the whole sword because it doesn't have much detail. I'm just trying to uh, give it the whole sword a uh, wash but then push it to the bottom of the sword. Once the shade is dry, I'm going to use Ushapti Bone to start cleaning up the bone areas. Uh, for places like the cloth that I also painted sundry dust, uh, I'm going to use a normal brush. And uh, for other bone parts that don't have much detail, I can use the same brush. But for the horns, I'm going to use a dry brush. And uh, with this, I'm using a very dry dry brush that doesn't really uh, let go of much paint on the brush. So I'm very uh, gently brushing a little bit of this color onto the bone areas so that it only catches on the very top parts. It doesn't matter if it gets a little bit on the gold because we're going to clean it up after. Now that that's done, I'm going to use Screaming Skull and I'm going to do the same thing. This time I'm trying to focus on the edges and the sharpest details. Next, I'm going to use Iron Breaker to give a highlight to all of the metallic silver areas. Uh, for the sword, I'm going to just dry brush it and the rest of the silver areas I'm going to give uh, a little uh, highlight with a small brush. Because I'm using dry brushes, I'm leaving the gold for the for last so that if uh, the dry brush hits the gold parts a little bit, I can uh, clean them up in the next step. Here I'm using Auric Armor Gold and a small, this is a size 2 brush, but, but it has a very good tip. And I'm using this to color again the 
gold parts with this color and uh, just leaving the recesses on the previous color but yeah just I'm just uh, picking up all of the gold parts again to finish up the gold I'm going to use liberator gold and this color is just going to go onto the very uh, sharpest edges and places that reflect the most light. Um, this color is going to tone down the very yellow color of your gold. So if, if you want to ton, tone down much more the yellow tone of the gold, you can use a little bit more of this color. But if you don't, just use it on the brightest spots. Next, I'm going to use Warpstone Glow. With this color, I'm going to paint the eye of the helmet of this aspiring champion. And to finish it off, I'm going to use Moot Green to give it a last highlight. And this is the finished model. I really enjoyed painting this model, the very bright gold and very uh, saturated blue that I chose to paint the armor really gives it that kind of uh, Egyptian magical kind of theme that the Thousand Suns have. And the new Citadel paints really work very well to make the job of painting gold that much more easier. I really hope you enjoyed this video, I certainly enjoyed a lot painting it and uh, I hope you find it informative and helpful and if you like it don't forget to like comment and subscribe to this channel to see more videos leave me a comment to let me know what you think what would you like to see next and I hope to see you on the next video thank you very much for watching You stayed. Great. Thank you very much for watching my video and if you would like to further support my channel you can become my Patreon on Patreon. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month and you are helping me create more and better content. If you can't, that's fine because you're helping my channel a lot just for watching and sharing. But you can read all of the details if you follow the link in the description below. I hope you can spare a dollar to make this hobby of mine a job for which I can get paid. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.